Hey tribe, welcome to HG Designs Crochet, HGDC. I'm Heather and this is my channel for the Granny Square and for crochet designers. Um, so today I've got the usual uh, vlog format that you're used to, the sit down chat. I'm going to do a roundup of January and February 2022 and I have got pattern updates, I've got a cal update, I have got whips and I've got some acquisitions to show you as well. So let's jump into it shall we? Welcome to HD Designs Crochet, HDDC, the champion of the granny square and nurture of the new and aspiring crochet designer. I'm Heather, the designer of granny square patterns for my tribe and mentor providing resources for those yarn creatives just like you creating income streams from their passion. I went from corporate lawyer being told what to do to full-time self-employed crochet designer doing what pleases my soul and I want all creatives to have the same freedom, to have financial stability, opportunities, independence, to have power of choice, to choose how and when you work. Join me on my mission to change the world one crochet pattern at a time. So before I get into the episode proper, I did want to mention a couple of things. One of them being that the day I'm recording this, Friday the 25th of February, 2022, um, is the day that Putin has sent Russia into the Ukraine. It started yesterday and there's lots and lots of stuff on the news at the moment and um, I just wanted to say that I don't really know what to say in this situation. I'm not 100% sure what I can do to help, um, but I just wanted to make it known that I am watching, I am learning, and that I don't, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say, but it's definitely on my mind. I'm not ignoring it by recording this, but um, I decided that I was going to be recording this day before all of this took place and I decided to continue recording and doing things. Um, I'm sending all my thoughts and prayers to Ukraine and just stay safe everyone, be kind to people. Middle of a pandemic, middle of a war. Let's do a British weather update. I don't think it's a British podcaster. I don't think you're a British podcaster if you don't do a weather update. So uh, I'm looking out of the window and it's actually a really nice spring day. The sunshine is out. It's mainly blue sky with a few clouds. It is really cold, but it also feels fresh. It's also quite bizarre that the weather's so good and everything's normal when it's not. Okay, so first section is HDDC. This is the section where I cover all things related to HD Designs Crochet, whether that be patterns, updates, cows, you name it, it goes here. And the reason I cover this section first is usually most of my FOs and whips and whatnot fall within HDDC. And um, if I go through it first, it makes the rest of the sections make sense. So if you are brand new, hi, hello, and welcome. I'm Heather, I am the owner of HD Designs Crochet. It's a self-named crochet brand. I design and sell my own patterns and I also teach others how to uh, become a crochet designer, whether you're new or aspiring. And I've got some workbooks out there for you to use. Um, In the world of HDDC, a lot has been going on in my personal life, which inevitably has an impact on HD design to crochet. So I'm self-employed, I'm a full-time crochet designer, and I am currently 25 weeks pregnant, 26 weeks tomorrow, um, and we are due May slash June sometime. Um, and I have had a wild ride of pregnancy. Um, the condition that I have is called hyperemesis. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, 
you will have seen this and if you are a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back i hope that you're all good i hope you're all tickety boo essentially this pregnancy has been really 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 rough um hyperemesis is latin and it means extreme sickness and vomiting um it's nausea and vomiting on a level where you can vomit 20 plus times a day um any time of the day, any time of night, it can lead to malnutrition, dehydration, um, it can lead to organ damage, it can lead to esophagus damage, dental damage, um, and that's just the physical side. Then on the mental side, it can lead to really severe depression from isolation, um, financial issues, there's a whole, a whole host of things that it can cause an impact because it has a massive effect on every single part of your life so I found out that I was pregnant on October the 2nd I remember because it was the date of my sister-in-law's baby shower and I went and got a test because I had a suspicion and it was positive and I decided to keep it to myself because I didn't want to overshadow my uh, sister-in-law's baby shower and also I needed to tell my partner he had gone to the gym and I took the test in secret um, and the nausea kicked in at week four and the sickness started at week five. Now, I told Brad a week later after I found out, I originally wanted to do a really cute reveal, like really thoughtful because whenever he's had things to tell me or announcements in the past, he's always gone above and beyond, made them super, super romantic. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, however, the nausea came in so thick and so fast that all of a sudden each day I just had to do what I could do just to get by and get through the day. And I ended up telling him um, quietly the following Sunday morning, so it was like seven or eight days later, um, and he was in the kitchen. And I just went and sat on his knee and just said, I've got something to tell you. And he patted my tummy and I nodded and I gave him the pregnancy test. And I wanted it to be a really, really special moment. And it still was special. It just wasn't quite the fireworks that I had planned in my mind. Um, but he had his suspicions because um, my moods were a bit off. I was very obviously nauseous. I was averse to quite a lot of foods and yeah he just had his suspicions um and then that week so I told him the Sunday and then from the Monday on the sickness started so it's a good job I told him because I wouldn't have been able to hide that in any way um I remember the first time I was sick I felt really really nauseous I went and got an apple I ate that apple and within minutes it came back up and I remember going into him back into the bedroom and saying well I'm officially pregnant because the morning sickness has started and little did I know that it, it wouldn't stop um so yeah it didn't stop it got a whole lot worse um i lost a lot of weight in the first six weeks so i usually sit around 55 kilos i dropped down to 52 kilos within like the first four to six weeks um the whole time there's been battles with getting access to the care that i need um getting healthcare providers to believe me it's just been it's just been hellish and I've covered so much of this on Instagram I have an entire highlight reel to it I've posted about it um and basically fast forward from October to when the sickness started to um January and I basically haven't been able to work and I had planned to work my entire pregnancy and of course, use that money to pay for the bits and pieces you need in your life, your outgoings, bits for baby, to bump up my savings. And it's just not been possible. Um, there's been like bits and bits of time here and there where I've managed to write up some workbooks that I was working on. Um, I've had a lot of insomnia, so sometimes I would just dedicate those hours to typing. But... <sighs> releasing two workbooks in the space of six months and no patterns and barely any launch hype around those workbooks that's there's not a steady income and although 
um, I had savings and I've had a credit card that I could use. It got to a point in the end of January where I was admitted to hospital three times within 20 days, 25 days. Um, and each time we went, we were getting worst case scenario that um, baby could be at risk surgery all sorts of different things and it was just it was just so so much to take on board um and we'd been in survival mode this entire time so we were told it the sickness might pass at 12 weeks 16 weeks 20 weeks so we just went into survival mode getting to each point and getting to each next appointment and getting to the next thing thinking that would help and although like slight things might help it it never really changed the situation as a whole um, so at 21 weeks, I was admitted to hospital for like three nights or something and quite a few things were put in place but then I ended up back in on the 4th of February um, for another three nights and out of all of them that was the most traumatic, scary admission and I ended up visiting hospital again on the 14th of February which is Valentine's Day and I was sat in a waiting room on my own um, because of the way COVID restrictions are in the UK, um, Brad's not allowed in the waiting rooms with me. The only exception was when um, I was admitted before and they wasn't sure if I was in, it wasn't sure if I was in early labour. So they allowed Brad to stay. Thankfully it wasn't early labour. Um, Brad's not been allowed in, so I've done it all on my own. And, um, I was just sat there and I was getting notifications through that like payments were bouncing and on top of everything else that I'm trying to keep on top of health wise then trying to sort your way through finances when you don't know when you're next going to be in hospital and you don't know honestly it just felt like such an impossible situation um and so I thought I'd be spending my first Valentine's Day with my husband celebrating with him. Um, like I don't put a great amount of stock into that day, but I just thought seeing as I'm now a married woman, we'd do something together. And I spent it in hospital and you have to have internal exams and all this bits and pieces. And I just sat there in the waiting room waiting for the next steps and just thought I've got to do something to sort out my finances so that if or when I end up back in hospital everything's covered and I don't need to worry about being overdrawn or payments bouncing I just need to carve out some time some space so I can get through what was then the last 13 weeks of this pregnancy um because I'm likely to be induced around the 37 week mark because of the impact on my body so far um i just needed to get through to the 37 weeks without all i needed to focus on was just my health and baby so i decided to run a sale and i posted a really vulnerable post on instagram that just said like i need your help i kind of summarized everything that i've just told you and I put a discount code and I ran this sale and I posted it. I'd pretty much drafted it all in the waiting room the night before. And I'd spoken to Brad about it briefly when I got back. And I posted it and I thought, worst case, I can just delete it. I've faced some pretty scary things throughout this pregnancy and I've handled them. So I can handle this. And I had a, an amount in my mind that I needed to cover because I need to clear my credit card, if not a big chunk of it. And I need enough to get me through to May when baby's here. At that point, I should get statutory maternity pay. And I'm just gonna interrupt myself and say, I had applied for government help, but because my business is passive and I can get pats and sales at any time for any amount, it meant that I had random bits of income coming in so there was some question about my eligibility as to whether I could get that help. Um, and essentially I needed to close my online shops so that I could get that help. But the help wouldn't really be enough to get me through. 
it definitely wouldn't clear the credit card and the backlog of debt um, and it would barely cover my outgoings for the month so then to close my shop um, and have to wait for this small amount of money to come in just seemed like huge like I'd been in an even worse situation so I made the decision that I would try and run this sale and reach the amount that I needed and so I wanted to generate five months worth of income so that I could clear my credit card and have three months worth of outgoings put by and um everybody's just been amazing the entire community has been so supportive and helpful and kind and within minutes like the first orders were coming through the first one came through and I just sat and cried I just looked at bump and I was like I'm gonna get you here being really emotional today Whew. So I'm gonna get you here and we're gonna be okay and I sent a screenshot of it to Brad and said we're gonna be all right and um yeah the sale ran for six days and honestly every single order that came through I was saying thank you if I had my phone on loud and we heard the notification we both say thank you like out loud um every time I cleared the notification as I'd, I'd say thank you to the person like thank you Abby thank you Louise thank you like whoever's name came up thank you thank you thank you um I I had this figure in mind but I, I wasn't really sure how I was going to get there because it was quite a big figure um but I'm really really happy to say that I got like 85% of the amount that I needed which means that I can clear a re really big chunk off my credit card and I've got just about enough to get me through as well to um when baby's here and on top of that not only did people buy patterns and workbooks but people people gifted to us via Kofi and also via Baby Taylor's registry. So a lot of people reached out and said, how can we help you? We don't need patterns. What items can we get you? And then um, Abby of, I think she's now whim whimsical Abby. She was like um, Abby Rose Designs or something before. She said, do an Amazon registry. So Brad and I put that together I mainly put it together during some of my insomnia hours, to be honest. Um, and we put it up and we didn't expect anyone to get anything. And I more shared it just so that other mothers could have a look at it and tell me what I was missing. And we have been absolutely blown away by just people's kindness and generosity. We've had nappies and wipes and clothing and toys and books and all of that's been arriving and it has just been amazing to see um prior to this sale we hadn't purchased anything for baby taylor partially because we kept getting worst case scenario that something could go wrong and also because our money was just being directed elsewhere like when you visit in hospital you've got the car park fees and loss of earnings and on and on and on and on and we were just being careful so we decided we wasn't going to buy anything for baby taylor until nearer the day um but we did actually go out last weekend after the sale ended. We went and got Baby Taylor's first outfit, um, which was just really nice to do. And it felt like a big moment for us as well. Um, I think the last in the last week, last couple of weeks, we've definitely been dealing with like pregnancy burnout and post-traumatic stress just because we'd been doing everything we could to get through and then now that we can pause and reflect on things a bit it's made us realise just how how much it's impacted us um, Brad's been carrying like the brunt of this because he'd been doing 12 hour shifts like 6 days a week to cover the outgoings and then coming home and sort out everything at the house keeping our home running, doing all the food shopping, all of the meal prep and whatnot. And sometimes I wouldn't even sit and eat with him anyway. Um, all of Albie's walks, taking care of Albie, feeding him, everything was all on him. And then he was also taking care of me and Bump. And then there was hospital trips and there was 
so many medical appointments and just it's just a lot and he looked so so tired and so so worn and we both just felt quite defeated just when you've been battling for so long you just you just drained and so it gave us some space to like process things um we went on a belated valentine's date to the cinema which was lovely to just be normal for a couple of hours um and it also means that financially there's not so much pressure on him now so that's it's just made a huge, huge, huge difference. And I just want to thank each and every person who shopped in that sale and just for all of your kindness because you really helped out me and my family in a moment where I've just been feeling so lonely and so stuck. And I know that's a lie. I know that I'm surrounded by friends, family and church who care, but also I've got this amazing community who care and yeah, I just thank you so, so much for absolutely everything that you've done. Um, so I've decided that I'm going to run a cal, a crochet along, because there was something like 600 pattern orders. So there's a lot of people now making a lot of granny squares and a lot of HDDC patterns. Um, and I want to run a cal just so that I can see what you're working on. Um, and there's like a little way to say thank you. Now I'm going to keep it as low key as possible so that there's no extra pressure or strain on me. Um, so I'm just hosting it via Instagram. The hashtag is going to be hashtag HGDCCal2022. I'll put that on the screen and I'll put all the details below. And there's also going to be an Instagram post about this as well, which you can check out. Um, and all you have to do to take part is work on a HGDC pattern. Um, and it's going to run from the 1st of March to the 1st of May and then at the end um, I would like to host a Zoom at some point so people can get together, they can crochet together, talk all things granny squares um, but I don't know the logistics of that. I might need to find somebody to help me take care of the admin side and maybe even be the host of the meeting so that worst case if i'm in hospital it can go on without me and i can always like pop in to say hello but it's not me running it um so that there's no extra pressures on me at the moment um and i might also look into doing some sort of like giveaways or something for winners again it just depends because i don't want to commit to too much and then have to let you down because i'm back in hospital or whatever um so for now, it's just going to be a cow you post with the hashtag um, and it means that we can all see what each other are making. I think I'm going to restart. I'm going to do another revival to make along with you. Um, so that will be lots and lots of fun. And I've also been making, um, <laughs> I'll have to show you these in a minute, but I've been making a little granny square pattern for baby Taylor as well. So I could always get I could always use that as my entry as well. Um, so that's the main updates for HDDC. There haven't been any new patterns for quite a while because when the nausea and sickness was at its worst, I couldn't crochet because for some reason it would make me heave and vomit more. Like I was getting motion sickness from crocheting. Like it's been such a cruel, cruel condition because it robs you of everything. The only thing I could do is literally just lie there on my side in the dark and not move for months and months on end. Um, but luckily things are getting better now. Like the sickness is largely controlled. The nausea is manageable most days. Um, I've started physio to deal with the muscle loss and to get some mobility and strength. So that's got me quite hopeful that I might start to gain some independence again. Um, the liver damage that I've suffered because of the sickness is being closely monitored. My kidneys are being closely monitored. My weight is starting to go up um, and ultimately baby is safe and happy. So all of those things, plus that finances are taken care of. And I'm also starting counselling um, from next week. All of those things mean that I'm just in a much, much better place. And so I have been reaching for the yarn a lot more. I have been wanting to make a lot more. 
Um, certainly since December, when I started to increase the anti-sickness tablets I'm on, I definitely started to make more and more and more. Um, so I actually have some whips to show you and I'm going to jump straight into those now. I've got a mixture of knitting and a mixture of crochet. First things first, granny squares. So this basket was completely full. Um, from sort of December onwards, I wanted to, I was again the urge, I wanted to start crocheting again. So I started making a load of granny squares. Granny squares are amazing because my hands sort of remember what they're doing without me having to fully look. It's a project that's just easy to do and I could drop this and run and go vomit and not have to come back and figure out where I am which was something that I was struggling with with other patterns I was working on. So I created 503 of these two round granny squares. I'm using a 4.5 mil hook. I'm using double knit yarn and it's all acrylic. I've got loads of notifications coming through and I don't know what they're going on about. Anyway. They're all in acrylic. I'm using my stash. That tub there is mostly those two are my double knit yarn. And I've just been picking them out at random and making a whole batch of granny squares. And I made them. I've woven in the ends as I've gone along. And I want to make a huge blanket for baby Taylor. Um, I'm just going to put this disclaimer in there. You need to supervise baby's fingers around crochet because they can wrap their fingers around the stitches and cut off their circulation. So you need to decide if you feel comfortable having crochet items around babies. Um, having said that, granny squares are my trademark. My child has to have a granny square blanket. They just have to. Um, and so I started putting that together. I've got this clear acrylic bag, um, which I picked up from Primark some time ago. And it's where my latest whips live at the moment. So um, I've started to put together Baby Taylor's blanket. I'm joining it using this black glitter acrylic double knit again. And this is from the pound shop in the United Kingdom. It's um, £1.50 for... Oh, no, it's one pound for 150 grams, so it is really, really cheap. Um, and I go in there every now and then, and when I see a load of it, I just get it. Um, I've put together the first four rows. It, it flew together so, so quickly. Um, and I've actually got the next 14 rows laid out. They were all on the floor nice and neat, and then Albie walked over them. So now I've got them on. I've got like these kebabs. They're on my um, Tunisian crochet hooks and my knitting straight knitting needles. And I've got each row lined up like this. Um, although it's for baby Taylor, it's also for them throughout their lifetime. Like I'm envisioning that they will use this when it's story time or cuddle up under it. And it's something that they will carry with them into later adulthood. Hopefully it will stand the test of time and it will go on to their children and if they don't really take to the blanket then I will use it with my nieces and I've always got space for crochet blankets in my life. Um, but what I've decided to do to make it extra fluffy is I've, I'm going to back this with a fluffy blanket. I got this fluffy blanket for £8 from Dunelm which is a store here in the UK and it is the Genuine Teddy Bear line. Can you see that? And I got it in this like okra mustard colour. Um, Baby Taylor, they, we're not having a nursery as such, but we have a theme for all of the items that we're gathering for them. And it's like woodland bears. Um, and I'm really liking the earthy, woodsy tones because Baby Taylor's gender is a surprise. We've gone completely gender neutral. Um, and I'm really drawn to like sage green, the mustard, autumnal colours, very woodsy, very earthy and the sunshine colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this and I'm going to then back it 
by joining it onto this blanket. Now I've got a couple of ideas of how I'm going to do it, so I'm going to give that a go and then I'll show you my success or failures. Um, so at the moment I'm just putting together the actual granny square blanket panel so I can then attach it to the fluffy and it is a, quite a large blanket which is why although it's for baby I don't really think they'll use it till they're a bit older at least um, I just really really wanted to get it done so that is like the whip that I'm spending the most time on um, at the moment I started putting that together Wednesday evening because I joined the Cray Bear knit along um, I was definitely the only crochet that I saw <laughs> um i did two rows and then i did another two rows yesterday when a family friend visited with their little girl um and i've got the next 14 rows mapped out on their kebabs and then i've got these to do some more i think i'm going to like 22 rows or something um so i'll see how much of that i get done over this weekend um and then i can start backing it onto the actual fluffy um Another thing that I'm thinking of doing is putting together a free guide for anybody who likes to make granny squares because I get a lot of questions about how I pick the colours for my granny squares, how I pick the layout of my scrap blankets. By the way, this one's going to be ripped down to be put into there because I did this like 17 in width and it needs to be 15 in width. But because I went widthways rather than lengthways, it's too wide anyway. Um, yeah, so I want to put together a guide so that it's just like a freebie on my website and people can download it. So if you have stash and you want to make scrap yarn blankets, then I can show you um, how I play with the colours, how I make so many random combinations and how I set them out. Because although my blankets look like they've just, those squares have been randomly put together the layout is actually very very intentional and I have like a, a general rule that I apply to all of my squares so that it it's cohesive and you don't have like too much of one colour in one area so I think I'm going to do that and then I might potentially also show um, how I back it onto this fluffy as a free guide as well and how you can make your own and change the sizing and all of that um, again I'm not putting any pressure on myself if I get things done great and if I don't then these are all ideas for after I've had maternity leave with baby Taylor um but I think that would definitely help because I get so so many questions how on how I make my granny squares put them together and I could always then have tutorials within that picture tutorials of how I make my granny squares join as you go continuous join as you go because although I have the videos some people just like to have physical pictures and just follow that so that's my first whip and that is technically a hgdc pattern because i'm making my own blankets um my next whip is living in my deathly hallows project bag which was gifted to me by josie rose uk and i have another baby tailor project in here let me show you the stitch marker on here so there is a bear theme for baby taylor and i got this stitch marker it's a bear it's a mama bear and then i also got this progress keeper which is a orange gummy bear and orange has become the colour for Baby Taylor because I've been craving oranges so, so much. So I will put the links to the shops below so that you can get your own if you want to. Um, I'm making the maple overalls. And again, I'll link, I'll link below the designer. Um, I got this pattern off Etsy and I've already made one version, but I haven't finished the button band. And I enjoy it so, so much, but... I wanted to make it again but in the round and so I've changed it slightly so that it's in the round and what I'm hoping to do is cut up there and then either add in buttons or a zip 
Um, so I'm on one of the legs at the moment. I've got the other leg and the sleeves to do and then the closure to sort out. I'm using some um, sport weight yarn. It's really old yarn that Brad's step grandmother gifted to me. She has arthritis and she can no longer knit or crochet. And I've got like 500 grams of it. And on the ball it says it's double knit, but when you put it next to like modern day double knit, it's more like sport weight. Um, or maybe even light worsted. Yeah, I think it's somewhere between um, double knit and iron weight. So this is coming out slightly larger than what it should because of the weight, but I'm fine with that. Um, I've got design my ideas in mind for my own romper and a couple of other things. And I wanted to use a sport weight yarn. So for now, I'm making lots of patterns with stash. And then if I do decide to design my own, I know exactly what yarn I'm gonna get. But right now I just don't have the headspace to be um, designing. And in my last vlog, I was actually designing my own Aran sweater, but I ended up abandoning that because it was just too much, especially with having to drop it to run off to Vom and just concentration, my concentration hasn't been there. Um, my body's just not functioning the way that it normally is. I'm anemic, my thyroid's been struggling, I've got liver damage, I'm not eating properly, I'm vomiting a lot, like I'm not sleeping very much, so just <laughs> normal things have just felt like so much work and so I've just really enjoyed following other people's patterns and it's just been so much fun. I know I've changed this ever so, ever so slightly so that it's in the round but it's not been a huge change. Um, I'm still following the designer's pattern so yeah I'm enjoying making that. It's really nice because it's all just knit 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 knit. I don't have to pay a huge amount of attention to this and it is quite easy to drop it and come back. Um, so I'm not sure how long it will take me to get this one finished, but it really doesn't take me long to get, like the body felt like it was never ending on this second one, I'm not going to lie, but, um, as soon as I started putting on the, the progress marker and started to see how much I'd done per day, it's made a huge, huge difference. Um, I actually got these in a set of six and so I've got this orange one. I've got a glitter orange one. I think I was sent a white one, a green one, and maybe a pink one and another one. Um, but I left a note to the seller saying, if you have an orange one, please, please send me the orange. And luckily they did, because that's what I really wanted. So I did see individual listings for them, but I think six of them were like three pound and an, inv an individual one was one pound 75. So I decided to take my chances and order the six and hope I got orange. And it paid off because I got two. That's pretty much all on whips because I am trying to focus on just a couple of items and getting them done. I'm really trying not to overwhelm myself and have too much going on. Um, so they're pretty much my main whips. I have actually recorded an entire separate vlog and in that I've shown you, I've, I've recorded about four or five actually and I've gone through the yarn that I've set aside for Baby Taylor. So. The entire top tub up there that you can just see, that's all yarn that I put aside for Baby Taylor. I um, very early on knew I wanted to make stuff for Baby, but obviously, as I've said, I have struggled with knitting and crochet and whatnot. And so um, when I could, and when I could bear to have like screens around me, because that was another issue, I started creating like a mood board um, of the colour palettes that I wanted, the sort of outfits I wanted to make. And then I went on to Ravelry and Etsy and I was looking for patterns. It's where I found the maple overalls. Um, fun fact, the maple overalls was actually on my vision board last year because um, we were trying for a baby and I put it on there as like manifesting that. And then um, it was one of the first things I wanted to make for baby when we got the confirmation. So I put together a list of all of the patterns that I want to work on and the yarn that I was going to use um, and pictures of the patterns. And I did that because 
um, I found so many great patterns that I wanted to work on, but I didn't have them all in like a central place. So then I would finish a pattern and I was like, what shall I work on next? And then I'd go look for another pattern rather than going back to the ones I'd already found. So I decided to make this list so that I could sort of tick them off. And also, um, Baby Taylor is due in May or June. Um, and it means I'm gonna have a spring or a summer baby. So they're not going to need a lot of woolly things earlier on, but they are going to need them come winter time. So I've also made the decision that the lightweight stuff I'm gonna make in sizes up to six months and then the Aran weight plus I'm making for um, six to 12 months in age so that it will get them through their first winter. So a lot of what I'm making is actually in much bigger sizes as well. Um, but because Baby Taylor has had two cousins born in January, it's definitely reminded me that babies come out all different sizes. We'll start with that. So um, Baby Taylor's had two cousins born in January, Isaac and Louis. Isaac was £9 plus and Louis was £8 plus. Very similar in numbers, but in actual physical size, it makes a huge, huge difference. Also, Isaac has grown so so much in the seven weeks that he's been earth side and he now no longer fits in the naught to three he's in like the three to six so a lot of the outfits that were purchased for him he's never even had a chance to wear now baby taylor might be born at 37 weeks which means that they could be around six pound um so they might be in the naught to three a bit longer but we just don't know so Hedging my bets, I've decided to make the bigger sizes because hopefully they'll get more wear out of that than the smaller sizes that they might not actually um, get to wear, if at all. So that's my thinking and reasoning. Um, but as I was saying, I've recorded loads of different vlogs all about Baby Taylor because I decided to put aside all of the yarn that I thought I might be able to use on their patterns because I was getting myself in a little bit of a funk thinking, I've not got yarn, how am I gonna make stuff? And when I actually dedicated their own tub, I've got so much yarn, I could make enough outfits for like 20 babies to keep them going for their first year. So um, yeah, that's interesting. I've also, um, as I said, got the list of patterns. So I've done vlogs on the yarn, the patterns I want to make, the whips I've made so far, and then also I'm hoping to do vlogs on when we go and get baby's crib and when we go and find car seat and little bits and pieces like that. We've also got some changes we're making to our home to get ready for baby. So I wanted to vlog all of that. And also I wanted to do a separate vlog showing you all of the stuff that came on the Amazon gift registry so far and the gifts that we've had because we've been gifted clothes from family, friends, from um, my hospital and there's more to come as well. So I really wanted to show you all of that. Originally, I was going to leave, I was going to get them all ready and put them up whilst I was on maternity leave, but now I'm thinking of doing it, of putting them up now, and then on maternity leave, I'm really just off. And there'll be no comments to reply to, there'll be no hit, there'll be no technical stuff to check in on. I can just literally step back and take that time off. Um, so I might end up doing that, but again, I'm not putting any pressure on myself. If a week goes by and I'm in hospital and there's, there's not an upload, then it is what it is. Um, but if I feel like I've got a little bit extra energy and I want to record something, then I'm just going along and doing it. Ultimately, I absolutely love to crochet, to knit, to design. I absolutely love doing it and it makes me, I get so much joy from doing it. And it's one of the things that I found really hard whilst really in the midst of being so ill is that something that I love to do I was unable to access and to do um and so although people are telling me to rest I am resting but for me part of resting is to work on a project and naturally designs come to my mind and I love recording it and sharing it all with you so I am being very mindful with my time and very intentional with my energy but I don't want to stop doing this I don't want to stop doing HDDC because I just love it so so much um and I'm also so so grateful that my talents and my gifts that I've been given 
have created an income source that isn't relying on my time um, or me physically being somewhere because if I needed to go out to work to create to raise five months worth of income I'd have to go and put in like 40 hour weeks somewhere there's just no way I'd be able to do it because of all of the medical appointments I've got all of the medical commitments all of the different health issues I've got going on day to day some days are really good like today where I can sit here and I can talk to you and other days I will not move from my bed or I will not move from the toilet because I'm vomiting so if I had to physically go out and earn that money I'd have been in so much more trouble but as it is I am so blessed that I've put a product out there and it can continue to generate money and income for me and that is the beauty of being a crochet designer and that's the beauty of having a diverse income portfolio as well um, and it's just made me even more determined that I'm going to help as many people as possible so that they can have income streams like this as well um, and it has got me thinking about workbooks I've got loads of plans for workbooks anyway and so I'm just going to chip away at them and see how many of them I can get written up between now and baby Taylor arriving. Again, no expectations, no pressure on myself, um, but a lot of them I've drafted, I've got outlines, I know what I want to say um, and as I said, I use my insomnia hours to sit there and just plod away at it. So one thing that I do want to do, because I've got so many different workbook ideas, I think I'm going to run a few polls on my Instagram to see which ones people want to see first, like which one should I prioritise and I think I'm going to put together some like Google surveys, some Google forms with quite a lot of in-depth questions and ask people to just fill them out because ultimately I'm making these guides for you and I want them to help you. So if I have your feedback on the types of things that you're struggling with, the things that you want to achieve, um, like obstacles, anything like that, how I can help, then that's going to produce a better workbook for you all. And so what I think I'm gonna do is put those up and then I'll let everyone know on Instagram. And then anyone that completes them, I'm gonna just give them like a 50% off code so that when the workbook comes out, they can just get it at 50%, like as my way of saying thank you for your input and your feedback. Um, and the more people I can get to give the feedback, the clearer the picture of what it is I really need to focus on. Um, another good thing from the sale is that I gained like 500 plus followers on Instagram. So hello to everybody that found me via the Baby Taylor sale. And that's what did inspire me to run the cow because there's so many people now that love all things HGDC that I really want to focus on that. Um, and another good thing is that I've seen quite a few five star reviews come in on Etsy and on Shopify, which is my website, and that makes a huge, huge difference. So thank you so, so much if you've taken a couple of seconds to go and leave a review. Um, I only want honest reviews. If you think the pattern's rubbish and you want to put a one star, then leave that review. I'd rather you email me first and let me know and maybe I can help sort it out, but I want honest reviews. But I've had so many five star reviews coming now. I think Etsy's told me that I'm at like my 50th five star review, which is really, really amazing because I've got nine patterns and like three workbooks on there and then 50 reviews. And it's really, really good because every time a review is left, it really helps other people that find HDDC because then they can go through it and check it's something that they want. Like, I don't know about you, but when I want something and I go on like Amazon or wherever, I check the reviews. If the item's been completely slated and it's got loads of one star reviews, I am not gonna get it. If it's got loads of five star reviews or four star reviews, then I'd be like, hmm, this might be the one for me. And it's the same for any of my products as well. Um, somebody might be hesitant to purchase a workbook because they're not sure if it's for them and then seeing other people posting how it's helped or what they think of the product is really, really useful. It also means on Etsy that Etsy starts to push that product more, which means more people find me which means that there's more income coming in, which means I can rest a little bit more. So thank you to each and every person who's left a review. Like, thank you so, so much. Um, so I've covered everything HDDC. I've covered my main whips. 
Um, and in terms of acquisitions, I've pretty much covered that as well because it was basically the stitch markers that I've shown you. I got a little bit of yarn, but that was for baby Taylor stuff. And again, I've covered that in its own vlog. So that's pretty much everything that I was going to tell you. Um, and that has been February and January for me in 2022. And hopefully I'll be back next week with another vlog. Um, what I'm trying to do is at the end of the month have a sit down vlog and it's more in the traditional format of whips, FOs, blah, 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 um, like this one. And then the other weeks I want to have more like studio vlogs or like day in the life. So you can see the things I do as a crochet designer. You can get updates and behind the scenes content. Um, again, no pressure, no expectations on myself. Um, I'm just doing what I can when I can and finding little ways to smile each and every day and I hope that you can do the same thing. Um, so until the next time I will see you soon, thank you so much for watching and happy making and check out the cal on Instagram and if you're going to be participating in the cal then comment below with what pattern you're going to be joining in with because I'm really intrigued to know. I think the majority of people might be using Revival or Invested. So comment below and let me know which one. Um, and then next time I will show you the Granny Square Baby Tater project I'm working on because I've got one more, but I just want to get it before I show you. So next time. Okay, take care tribe. Thanks for watching. Bye, take care, bye.